to the Jazz Ranch, Finger Poppin' Daddy's Groovy Chicks and Hip Cats. And I'm continuing my series on great licks by great musicians. This is a uh, fourth step of that, which is uh, Great Licks number seven. And this one's by Chick Corea. Now, Chick Corea is one of the great modern masters of jazz piano. And um, I have a quote from Chick that's very interesting. He said this, My one thing is to continue to be interested and want to be a student. I don't want to be a master. When I'm learning something, I'm in my element. Now, that's very interesting to me because I feel the same way. I feel, even though I've, I've been a teacher for many years, I'm always a student. And I learn from you, I learn from life, I learn from things that I study, and this is one thing I learned by practicing something by a master. It helps you to progress in a certain way you wouldn't have otherwise. And you know, all artists do this, whether they're painters, writers, theatrical people, dancers, what have you, you know, whatever category you're in, you can learn from the people who do it the best. And that's how you will improve. So, I'm going to be using the two cameras, bear with me on this one. But here we go now with a great Chick Corea lick from Steps What Was, the first cut in his album called Now He Sings, Now He Sobs. Starting out here, this is my part seven of Greatest Licks, and it's Chick Corea. Now, you know, it's important to learn to imitate the masters. In other words, um, all the greats learn from the masters. So whether you be a John Coltrane or Picasso, whoever you are, even if you're an innovator, you still had to study the masters. You had to study the people that started the tradition, you had to learn the tradition and so on, you know. So we learn the tradition of, of uh, bebop style. We move on to the, you know, fourths and modal playing is a more advanced style. And from there go on into the avant-garde. So, you know, people like uh, Eric Dolphy, you know, like these people, John Coltrane, Eric Dolphy, Ornette Coleman, they were all great innovators that changed the uh, style of jazz, you know, and became uh, in the avant-garde. So now uh, Chick Corea is more like a mainstream player but he had a lot of innovations. When he came out with Now He Sings, Now He Sobs it was really a new sound, you know, in which he had mastered the uh, what I call the modal sound. So I'm going to show you in this video uh, specifically what he does in this lick particularly with the cording in his left hand and what's going on underneath and sort of analyze it that way. Here we go. Starting out I just want to say that Imitation or imitating a master's style, whether it be licks or is the way he chords or his voicings or whatever it may be, is something that we have learned to do as musicians, as well as writers, as well as artists, actors, whatever have you. You know, any any category of expertise, we learn from the people who do it really well and who are the masters. And if we're someone like John Coltrane or Picasso, we perfect that when we're like maybe 12 or 15 years old, you know. Picasso had mastered the art of painting when he was 15 and then had to move on and become an innovator and become involved in the avant-garde. Now Chick Corea is more of a traditional player but he also has a touch of avant-garde and he was also very much in the forefront of the modal way of playing which was uh, taking place in the late 60s, early 70s. So. This is an example, a great example of modal playing where you're playing on just a C minor scale. And um, he does amaz an amazing lick here, which I'm going to show you the uh, concept of it. So here we go now with the Now He Sings, Now He Sighs, Steps, What Was, the Chick Corea Lick. So now what's happening here is Chick is playing on a modal scale built on C minor. So he's playing a C minor modal scale. And it's the fifth mode of an E flat major because you know E flat is the relative major of, of C minor. 
So like these voice things are happening and what he does here is he plays that one. So you can play any of these. They're all relate to that C minor scale. But then he plays this. Now that's that's kind of like a pentatonic scale. What he just that's pentatonic. And then what he does is he shifts it by going up a half step. Now that it's not that, but what it is if you went up to there, you see, if you went up to this one, that voicing of the C minor with the sus four in it and the minor third, and then you went up a half step to be that voicing there. Now he can play something built on that chord and a different pentatonic scale that's chromatic to the other. See? Then he goes up a whole step from there up to this. And then back to. So these are, are, are great uh, figures because they echo each other or call and, you know, call and response kind of idea. Like that one, then this, then this one. Right? So now I'll talk about the next lick. Yeah, so at the beginning you have these simple lines like, like, and then you have those that are chromatic to each other. Then you have this chords up to here, still C minor now, but then he has this. Right, so that's down an arpeggio on the upper extension of a C minor, nine. Got, and then he does this fourth voicing here. And now this shift, right, and now this is very chromatic now. It's also arpeggiated and chromatic. We haven't seen any chromatic movement until then. That's the great thing about Chick is that he does everything. He plays modally, he plays bebop, he plays chromatic, he plays, you know, stepwise, he plays pentatonic. He incorporates all of these in his licks. And this is a great one because it has all of those happening like this. So you have like a descending motion, then up, descending, ascending, then modal, then shifting. You know, now bebop, kind of like bebop, you know, that's a bebop lick there. Down here, shifting again, and then shifting again, and then down to here. You see, I'll play that slowly now so you hear it. Arpeggiating, descending, modal on a C minor, then shifting, now more like a bebop lick down to there, then chromatic again, bebop lip, chromatic there, and then again, then shifting down to the C minor, modal again, modal again, ending on C minor, there, you see? So, an amazing lick, and uh, it's written out for you so you can study it. And, um, you know, give me a comment or ask questions, and I'll be happy to take it up in, in depth. Okay, so you might be asking, what is the value of this for me? And if you're a beginner, there's probably not a lot of value for you because this is an advanced concept. But it is important to study the masters, and Chick Corea being one of them, modern masters, of jazz playing in which he in incorporated modal playing with bebop you know he played uh, just about every kind of mastered every kind of style and had his own unique sound see so it's very interesting how he moves and that elongated line and to have that kind of fluidity and articulation that's something as if you're a more advanced player or intermediate that's something you really want to learn from this lick and it will help you Guaranteed. <laughs> I just want to end by saying this is one of the greatest uh, recordings I've ever heard by a jazz pianist, Chick Corea, Now He Sings, Now He Solves. And when my buddy Joe turned me on to this recording and we listened to it for the first time, I was astounded with his articulation, his technique, his ideas, his, uh, the depth of his playing and everything that was going on there. The way the trio played with him, um, it was just totally amazing and still is amazing today. And he, he is that way and has been throughout his life. An incredible musician. So I'll leave you with that and until next time I'll say sayonara. 
And in the words of my great friend Hermie Dressel, God rest his merry soul, swing loose, and we'll see you next time around. Bye-bye.